even if I woke up tomorrow and they took all the accolades away and all the titles and all that stuff, I feel like my biggest pride and joy is my character, my morals, my value and who I am as a person. Like The reality of being a high achiever can be quite crippling. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Because like, you could commit to a lot of things and start thinking you're a failure because you're not achieving the things you want to achieve. Mm. No, you're just really bad at planning. The winners are often the people that are just last standing. Yeah. Have I ever spoken about my love life online? I really don't know. Like properly, like actually being like, it's there was an exclusive. Like Hello and welcome to the Two My Sisters podcast. I'm Courtney. I'm Renee. And I'm V. And we are your online sisters and hosts of the Two My Sisters podcast. We are all about promoting the wellness, growth and development of a community of sisters around the world. And in today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest. Ah, Not just our honorary sister, but actually our real sister to the point where like, like genuinely it's giving, we need to do a DNA test to find (laughs) out if there's some blood relation there yes in fact we are joined by the amazing the magnificent the wonderful miss v kativi commotion 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 commotion. guys we have mentioned v before multiple times we have you know had her at our last live show we have we're just in awe of her we are in love with her we are fangirling of her and it is such an honor to be able to bring miss v to the podcast at long last honestly thank you so much for coming obviously we've introduced you as v Yes. Because we know you like that. Honest yes. to you know what I mean. Yeah. But I mean, activist, Harvard grad, Hello. Oxford grad, Hello. entrepreneur, United yeah. Nations young leader. Oh my God. A whole boss bay founder, of founder, EDV, like what? conference holder, pending PhD, world changer. Oh, oh my God. It's given accolades. You know, oh my all God. the accolades. I need you guys around me all the time. Oh my God. <laughs> but honestly, please introduce yourself to the sisters that may not know you. Oh my God. Like It'd be my crazy cheeks. if they don't know her though, but <laughs> you know, whatever. Let's do that. Do you know what I'm saying? For the my babies. cheeks literally hurt right now from smiling. So I'm so honored to be here. I'm so excited. I love Courtney and Renee. I feel like they're my real life older sisters. So it's so nice to be able to bring our relationship online mm. for you guys to like experience and see. And um, yeah, it's so joyful and I'm so happy to be here. My name is Vika Tivu. I am a 25 year old girls education activist and young leader for the SDGs at the U. When I love advocating for all things girls, women, education, anything to do with empowerment, access, all of that jazz. And yeah, I'm just really enjoying life. Oh, wonderful. We know really so wholesome. You know what I'm Give wholesome stuff. Give wholesome stuff. <laughs> um but yeah i mean we absolutely adore the intro and we adore hearing about v and all the great work that v does and i actually wanted to open this conversation with a little bit more about v behind the scenes because we get the v on you know youtube online and a lot of your work means that you have to be you know in the public and all that kind of stuff but who really is v how would you describe who v is aside from all of the incredible things that you do that's a good question. And I, I said to the girls that I did not like want to know what's happening today because I just <laughs> wanted to be on the spot and just have like this like natural organic conversation. So I did not expect you to ask me that one. Mm. Oh, it's going to cut deep. But I feel like V is just a joyful character a person who enjoys life genuinely like I wake up in the mornings and I'm just so grateful to be here and to be alive and Mm -hmm. to have all these opportunities and chances to see the world to experience people to be able to hug so many people impact so many people so I think for me I'm just I love life I love learning I love food culture Mm -hmm. I love empathizing with people Mm. i love being there for people i love serving i love being a sibling an auntie family is so important to me i love culture like my own culture and background being zimbabwean i'm just we've got strong we have got a strong zimbabwean community always rep like they always stand strong 10 toes they've been taking registers alongside the south african sisters they be taking registers in our comments oh yeah Oh yeah, like you've got to. Like I'm so proud of where I'm from. Like we're such a joyful people. Mm. Like I'm so similar to so many people 
on in the country like this is not a one-off like people are genuinely walking around just like grinning at each other like it's just like <laughs> always smiling you know it's just our natural state so yeah I love being Zim and I love representing that mm. I love showcasing like who I am. So even if I woke up tomorrow and they took all the accolades away and all the titles and all that stuff, I feel like my biggest pride and joy is my character, my morals, my value and who I am as a person. Like That's I'm really beautiful. proud of myself. Gorgeous. You know, That is beautiful. Have you always been like a very joyful, mm-hmm. grateful person? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From early on, because it was like, it was a hard upbringing, right? Like it was mm. a really, really tricky upbringing growing up in Zimbabwe, losing my father, moving to the UK and in Zimbabwe, especially if you don't have your father you're automatically given orphan status so I feel like growing up was pretty tricky having to navigate people like having a label on you and already Mm. like kind of stereotyping you and treating you in like a very like pitiful way you know and then meeting my mom when I was like six or seven and then trying to learn English and the school systems like it was a lot of like tricky stuff so Mm. I would be so grateful for any little thing I would get that would bring me joy because it wasn't like coming in often. Mm. So like I remember Christmases and like having the tiniest little tree and we'd give each other like toothpaste and Coca-Cola and like a rock for Christmas. And like we would be so over the moon, like someone painted this rock. It's so pretty. It's mm. You just learn to be grateful for the littlest things, you know? Mm, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. So I guess I've always been like that in a way. And my mom, like I was trying not to talk about my mom today. I'm not going to cry talking about her. <laughs> we but, like, going there. If, we going <laughs> if you meet her, like she's me, but like times 10, she lives mm. in La La Land. So growing up with her, it was like a household of like, been in a game or like in a fairy thing so yeah. everything was just even if you had a lack of yeah. you would feel like you had everything in the world mm. so gratitude came so easy that is wonderful and yeah so i had a question regarding mm. your your amazing relationship with your mom mm. like, yeah <laughs> mama v firstly you share mama the same v, birthday I hello you share the same birthday but you two are so close and Honestly. just seeing like really how are. proud she is of you i think any yeah. that would be incredibly yeah. proud of you but how expressive she is of yeah. her pride yeah um as well as your just your love and your affection for each yeah. other but obviously you mentioned that you didn't meet your mom until like later on yeah it was like seven so how did forming that bond happen was it always like an easy road no that was hard that was really hard and I always Mm. tell people like when my sister and I got on the airplane to come over to the UK we came on our own and then we just had like a flight attendant like look after us and then when we landed my sister was like she's with her best friend like which one is it and I was like I don't know like Mm. you go to one I go to one obviously I ran to the wrong one whatever (laughs) and like that was literally we were literally like hello it wasn't as though there was a relationship prior that was Mm. a genuine like hi you're my mom and I'd call her madam for so long so I was like not used to her like I did I'm like madam I need some soap and she would like sob being like it's me Mm. I'm your mom so that took a while but I think maybe like six months in like yeah joint to the hip like wow. that's that's us bestie right six there six months is quick yeah, yeah. yeah. well she made like everything a game know, like, that's yeah, what I, I can't mean lie. Out here. like if you meet her now like everyone in the family would be like my kid needs to meet her like they all want mm-hmm. her to be the grandma of the family because she's just like makes up songs and dances mm. she is meant to be like a mom to toddlers for the rest yeah. of her life you know what i mean your yeah. mom's joy is yeah infectious. she's infectious. Yeah. absolutely adore her yeah so yeah no relationship is really good i love her i absolutely adore that i mean yeah. you've spoken a little bit about your mother yeah. and i know it's a relatively touchy subject yeah. but also speaking about your father yeah, yeah, um yeah, yeah. and how that has also impacted you as a person, yeah. how that's impacted a lot of the work that you do. Yeah. I would love to hear more about that. And I'm sure the sisters would appreciate it too. Yeah, no, the girls are catching me off guard. Oh my God, I'm like... <laughs> when we're, we to your best, we're, we're, just like, <laughs> no, we're really getting into it. Um, yes, for those of you who don't know, like I lost my dad at a pretty young age, at the age of two. So that was pretty hard because growing up, you're just like... Where's like on Father's Day, all the kids are making cards and they're like doing the bunny rabbit things and they're making it for their dad and you have to sit it out and you're like, Mm. oh. Mm. And my mom never remarried. She never dated. Like she was like, once my true love is gone, that Mm. was my time. So she's been like a single, single mom. Unless who knows what she's doing behind the scenes. I don't know. But like in front of me and my sister, (laughs) you know. Yeah, I'm like, girl. (laughs) Not mama be getting an expose. I mean, she's cute. So I'm not, I wouldn't lie. If you got any cute uncles. Exactly. We want fine, upstanding Zimbabwean men. 
Yeah, okay. somebody couldn't, you know. But mm. my sister and I, for so long, we'd be like, can you please, like, date? Can you have someone? Mm. Like, we wouldn't mind having a stepdad, but she was just very, until I've raised you guys and you're at the house, like, mm. I'm not interested. So we grew up in a very female household. Mm. So losing my dad, like, you could feel it. Like, the the, feel, the feeling of the impact was there because there wasn't a replacement. You know mm. what I mean? Like, it was very much, you don't have one. Like, that's it. So that was hard because I'd always think, like, would I make different dating choices mm. if I had a dad, you know? Like, Ooh, so how has it impacted your dating choices? That, that's the thing. I, I genuinely think like we laugh about these things, but like I'm so sure I've got like father issues somewhere. Yeah, Because I'm like, I, <laughs> I see the all. patterns. Don't we, don't you know what all. I mean? I see the patterns and I'm like, are you like trying to find a dad in like mm, dating? Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's really, really odd. And I don't know. I don't know. But it's definitely impacted because I haven't seen this like healthy relationship in the house. Yeah. So there's nothing to like emulate. Right. It's very much like you're just starting from rock bottom and people will be like, well, my dad like flies me here and does this for me. So like, how dare you treat me that way? Like there's no reference. There's no point of reference. Mm, like it's really empty. So yeah, I feel like I felt the impact in dating. I felt the impact in like school things. I felt the impact financially. Mm. I feel like there's been many times that I've stepped up to the plate and kind of taken the fatherly role in the house because mm. there's like a missing earner. There's like, right. it's like all on my mom, right? So yeah. there's going to be a missing gap. So I think, yeah, I felt it in all in all aspects and that's been hard. So I always say like, I wish I could have had like five minutes just to get to know him, anything. Because mm. I lost him when I was two. So like, that's like very early. So I don't really mm. know him. I miss him, but I don't know what I miss. You know? Mm. Yeah. That's deep. Wow. That's really deep, huh? Deep. And I always ask people, I'm like, what's better to like have had it and then lost it or to have mm. never experienced it at all? Oh, well, it's given philosophy. It's given philosophy. It's given philosophy. It's philosophizing. Philosophizing. Has a lot of philosophy. And I don't know. I'm like, right now I get to fill in my own gaps and be like, he's yeah. this amazing man. But mm. we don't know that. Like mm. me and my sister joke about it. We're like, we don't know if he was a good man or not. How do you know? Right. right? right. But like, did we get you, to... Did your mom ask a lot of, like tell you a lot of stories about him and stuff? Yeah, she, she does tell us a lot of things. But obviously like, if anyone's passed away, you're only ever going to say the, the good, good things, right? The good things, right? Like absolutely. everyone's so kind about him. And obviously I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm pretty sure he's a good guy, yeah. but I'm just saying like, there's all these question marks of mm. like, do I have this kind of trait because I got it from my dad or mm. there's so many question marks. So yeah. I do wish I'd known him because at least I'd be like missing something that I know. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, I just miss a void that was never filled. Yeah. Yeah. That was super transparent. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. sharing. I mean, thinking more broadly about some of your relationships as well. I know, yeah. obviously, we've spoken about your mom, your dad. Yeah. There's also the wonderful Miss Fadzi. Yes. And would it be a To My Sisters episode if, if we, we didn't, we didn't talk sister. about your actual sister? Yeah. So we would love to hear more about, you know, yeah. Fadzi. We'd love yes. to know more about your relationships with sisters in your life and how yeah. that's been pivotal in a lot of the work that you're doing and who V yeah. has, you know, transformed into yeah, no, my sister is phenomenal. Like, she is everything. Shout like, out, Fadzi. We know you're watching uh, this, girl. We love you. One of the loveliest people. Do you know what I mean? So Genuinely. cute. She got a little anger to her, though. She is don't. feisty. She got feisty. I can't lie to you. Don't, is, don't let it. I was going to say something. I was going to yeah. say something. So, yeah. let's so feel. Good, yeah. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> The small folk? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no, no. I always say that to him. I'm like, girl, you are that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Small but mighty. Small, small but mighty. mighty. She's yeah. so protective. Like, I might, like, be naive to things sometimes. Mm. Like, especially, like, financially. Like, once you start making a little bit of cash, you mm. know, some people around you start moving a little bit oh, funny. Okay. You know, the problems become bigger yeah. because your bank account is a little bit healthy. <laughs> so, like, my sister, she's very, like, no. Mm. Like, she's protecting. She is... She's like my fighter. So like when I can't say it, she'll say like she's happy to always be the bad guy right. so that I can like, you know, relax a little. So she's great. Yep. And she practically raised me, you know, mm. like I just, yeah, I owe so much to her. I feel like people, everyone needs to like experience a situation like that. Like she just holds me down. Mm. Like, I don't know. I can talk to her about everything. Like Beautiful. she also brings Beautiful. out the rebellious side of me. Like, I feel like I'm very like goody two shoes yeah. and she'll be like, can you just like do something? And she used to take me out when I was 16, like to the club illegally. 
I'ma say that is illegal. What and has been, been shared on this podcast <laughs> is not legally it was in the past. It was in the past. I'm 25 legally now, guys. <laughs> so like um she'd be like to my mom, she's going. I'm like, mommy, help me. Mom was like, I got it like yeah, 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 so like why. yeah in fact growing up she had more authority in the house than my mom like that is if so she said I'm going yeah. to the club my mom's saying yeah. she's staying I'm going because she's the eldest daughter right yeah, yeah. So, and you're the youngest yeah she's a deputy of, parent yeah yeah that's a deputy sure. parent that's a really deputy parent. Oh, that's what we call it like she was like she'd make sure I was fed clean homework all that jazz like mm. my mom would be like going to work and then she would handle the rest so she mm. was just doing childcare. like she really raised me you know so I'm being triggered. yeah she's yeah, giving her my chest yeah <laughs> you feel it right yeah. whereas i don't relate to that because like i was the younger one so like i never had to deputy parent in that way mm. right how did that impact your relationship with her i mean she would be mad sometimes being like mom like I'm a child too, you know, but mm. mom's like, well, what are we going to do? Yeah. So like she understood the role she had to play, but like it definitely had like effects, you yeah. know, like she wished that she could have been babied herself, but she was babying me mm. and she did a good job, must yeah. I say. Yeah. Fantastic job. But I also wish she'd had that moment in time, but mm. you know, what are you yeah. going to do? You dealt the cause you dealt and sadly she had to step into that role, yeah, but yeah. she took it with such grace. Like I never realized it until now when we talk now and she's like, oh man, you know, wish I could have been playing outside when I was looking after you. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry. But like growing up, I never felt it. She was such a good sister right. and she'd share things with me. Like I'd tell her everything, any first. It was like it was all going to her like there's nothing i'd hide from her she knows everything a little too much sometimes Not but like TMI, child. yeah like mm. everything but i love that closeness it's yeah. something like yeah you rarely see yeah um yeah oh, between yeah. sisters especially when you've grown up with that kind of dynamic yeah. where yeah. one may feel like they have this kind of unnecessary responsibility oh yeah but she's done a really good job and it'll be great yeah. to have her on the pod one day no yeah. i would love High that if you're listening to this it's this a is your public invitation. roll call <laughs> that would be really nice i think she deserves to like you know share her her side and how all that stuff made yeah. her feel because mm. i can only imagine it was like it took a toll but yeah. she was really good about it and we would do that for each other right because like you're filling in for a parent that's yeah. not there so she would play dad to me sometimes i'd play dad to her sometimes mm. like on more of the practical side and more of like the financial side i held it down yeah. on the emotional like raising and like mm. all the nurturing stuff she held it down good, so yeah. like we kind of interplayed because mom would be at work yeah, like she yeah. had to she had to go get that money you know she had to go True. get that money ain't yeah. that a reality by <laughs> yeah ain't that a reality oh quite yeah. a, a lot of folks mm -hmm. moving into that work that you've been doing and yeah. i'm sure i mean me and courtney talk about this often but being the high achiever being that person that's out here being the perfectionist we're achieving yeah. we're making strides yeah. we're the first of the first of the first oh yeah Whilst that is really encouraging and wonderful and an excellent journey, yeah. the reality of being a high achiever can be quite crippling. Yeah. And oh, yeah. There's anxiety, there's obviously imposter syndrome, there's yeah. the hard work that a lot of people don't see behind the scenes. Oh, and yeah. I think what's really beautiful about your story and actually knowing you, I guess behind the curtains is knowing that what you see in public is a manifestation of what you've been working on in private. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I think it would be lovely to hear you Walk us through that journey of being that high achiever. What does that yeah. actually feel like? What does it look like on a daily basis? Yeah. And what are some of the things that you might have struggled with in trying to be a, you know, boss babe that's out yeah, here that's yeah. just trying to make things work for her and her family? Yeah, it's 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 not easy. It's definitely not easy. Like, it's, it's kind of like you're committing to yourself every day. Mm -hmm. Like, you're waking up and you're saying, like, I want to be the best in my field and I want to work really, really hard. And you have to re-motivate yourself. It's not like having a job where you're going to and you're kind of like doing it for someone else's vision or whatever and then you go there when five o'clock strikes you go home yeah. and you're motivated because obviously you want to pay your bills and all that stuff when you're running your own business when you're running your own enterprise or like your own thing you have to like be your own boss you have to motivate yourself like you can't really just decide not to show up because when mm -hmm. you don't show up like it all crumbles yeah, things yeah. Happen. yeah exactly so it's like you ha it's this lifelong commitment that you make. So it's in everything that I do, like in the way that I sleep, the way that I eat, the way that I exercise or the way that I do my morning routine, like everything has to be fine tuned to make sure that when I show up, I can really show up. Mm -hmm. Cause if I don't give it my all, like I just, I don't know. I don't know what that would look like. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not easy. 
it's definitely tricky mm. but i feel like with the right people around you mm. with the right systems in place like i really believe a lot in systems and in trial and error and when it works like find out how to repeat it and how to then grow it yeah. so i feel like in this journey of it's like twofold right like there's the advocacy side which mm. is obviously all the work that i do with girls education and like my philanthropy and things then on the other side it's like having this business model that's like online yeah. and then being able to scale that and be able to sustain yourself so yeah. it's like two sides of a similar coin and yeah, I feel like I've really grown in that space. And I always like, I'm always jumping around and like smiling, like all fairies and things. But like when it comes to like the work side, negotiations, all that stuff, like I'm very strict. Like I'm mm -hmm. a very serious mm -hmm. businesswoman and I know what I want to do and like what my aims are. And I feel like people are starting to like respect it more. Yeah. Whereas at first I was just like, oh, she's a little girl. Just like, yeah. oh, la di da. And it's like, no, like this is how it's happening. And this is when it's happening. Yeah. So it's a daily, it's a daily thing. Like mm. I have to really commit to it and just have the right team. Mm, yeah. Cause there are quite a few people that talk about like systems and how important they are. Yeah. So I want to know what then was one system yeah. that you implemented firstly in your personal life yeah. to make this kind of success yeah. possible for yourself that like you saw a massive difference. Yeah, I think it's a big one that you girls are probably very used to hearing, but accountability, like mm. it is, it has changed my life. Like accountability groups have changed my life. I have Joshua Malala and they like hold me down mm. in a different type of way. And mm. I used to talk a lot about when Josh and I would do our like calls every single week, religiously on a Sunday for two hours. We go through every single thing, like a fine tooth comb. And when me and Mal sit down, like we are going through our diaries, we're writing down our goals. Like if I don't say, it or write it down it's not gonna happen mm. and if I don't tell someone and like have a plan in place it's just not gonna work like I hate empty promises I hate empty just saying things to say it like if you say it you better stick by it mm. and I need to see and I think someone really wise said it to me one time when they said what do your actions say about the type of person you're trying to become? Like if mm. the world was on mute and we just watched you, what does it say about how you want to live? And like, if you're saying you want to be the best in this field, okay. but you don't practice ever, like it doesn't make sense. You can keep saying it all you like, mm. we're hearing you, but you're not doing it. So mm. accountability helps me stay on track. And then my goal setting system, which is in my book, if y'all mm -hmm. want to check that out, um, which is all about I like breaking it down. You're, you're <laughs> funny, fun it. fact, yeah. if you look at our photo shoot that yeah. we have like for our entire like rebrand yeah. for season four, yeah. you will see that we are kikiing <gasps> over reading a particular book. Right. And of course it had to be EBV. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know 100%. that. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We have oh. our two copies by you. Right there, signed, oh, that's sealed, really delivered. Nice, and we guys. posted that on the lawn. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Listen, you guys yeah. understand the relationship goes way back. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. I want to see yeah. that picture, please. I will send it to you. Um, but yeah, it's in the book. Like I talk a lot about like pyramid setting goal systems and how you have to break everything down mm. to that absolute minute thing. Because if I don't know what writing a book or having a podcast even or doing a PhD looks like on a daily basis then I'm not going to do it right. if you tell me that doing a PhD means of course you get to become Dr. V and walk across mm. the stage fine but that also means exams dissertations like going to class like how what does that look like on a weekly basis mm. I need to mm -hmm. do that so that's one of my top systems like before I say yes to anything I'm breaking it down working my way backwards because you could commit to a lot of things and start thinking you're a failure because you're not achieving the things you want to mm. achieve no you're just really bad at planning well that's, that's good. it, y'all. That's it, Because one thing we love on this podcast is a good drag. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time I listen to you guys, I'm like, <sighs> drag. Yeah. So that? I think it's, it's, it's goal setting, it's planning, ah. it's like committing. And um, when you work it backwards, if you feel like I'm not in the mood for mm, like yeah. 10,000 steps a day or reading 20 pages of a book per day, or if you're not in the mood for it, just, just be honest with yourself. Like, yeah. don't force yourself to do something that is just not energizing you you're not committed to it because mm. you're just going to be dragging it and like yeah yeah you're just going to feel like a failure for no reason when you're not you're not i love the fact that you touched on reality because one of the realities of the work that you do and actually the work that we do is not everybody is going to like you oh Ooh, one thing about that it's really funny oh. because me and courtney have actually recently had a lot of interesting grown men in our dms recently um, in our dms the, yeah in our um the tms yeah <laughs> 
talking about all sorts of stuff. You remember uh, the video that would, yeah, anyway. <laughs> The audacity. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. The audacity. Oh, girl, it's been an interesting past few weeks, but alas, we move and we progress. But the reality of the situation is when you are doing something that is bold or, you know, ambitious or is highly visible, you're also going to be highly visible to people that don't like you or don't like the work that you do or just have some... Oh, hatred. Against you. Some kind of hatred that they might need to oh, think about absolutely. getting some therapy for. Yes. Help to help <laughs> <with> slash <laughs> to my sisters. You tried it. You tried it. Hello. <laughs> you tried Hello. It. And I think this is, <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts and reflections, especially, I know you've definitely gone through it and had yeah. some of, you know, quite horrible experiences where oh, you've had yeah. folks that actually don't like you, don't like the work that you do, yeah. come at you a bit sideways, left ways, yeah. all sorts of ways. Yeah. Um, even though it feels like you're trying to do good for not just yourself, but also for the community that you really care about. Mm. So I would love to hear, first of all, your reflections on that, but also mm. the sisters are equally trying to chase ambitious things yeah. Yeah. that will require them to actually put themselves out there and that's a real fear that especially women yeah. knowing historically that we have been you know the first punching bags the first oh, yeah. scapegoats for a lot of ire and fury and anger that a lot of people have so yeah like what are your experiences of hate online and oh. how can folks that are scared to put themselves out there get over that Oh, hate online. It's almost like part and parcel of like being online. Right. It's like mm-hmm. you're going to get it, which is ridiculous. Like, I can't believe we're just so used to that. Like, it just comes with the territory. Yeah. But it really, really does. Like, if you're doing something really, really fantastic and really, really well, you're going to rattle a few cages because sometimes it's almost like a mirror that you're holding up to someone else and it makes them think like, oh my God, I'm not doing enough. Or, mm. oh my God, I should be doing... So then now, instead of channeling that into how can I go and like improve my life so that I feel happy within my life and I feel accomplished within my own life, they just hate on you because it's like oh if I bring you down then at least we'll all be sad and it's like that's not how life works you know Mm. what I mean and um yeah like I really try not to take it personal I really do because it can't be me like if you really heard what I just said and if you really met me and you really understood what the mission is there's no way you would say that so whenever someone does bring hate or or unkind things I always wonder like what's going on with them Mm. that they had to say that? And I know people say that and you feel like, oh, that's so cliche. Like, of course you're going to say that. But really it's true because like, for example, I really think like I'm so cute, you know, like I really, I look in the room and I'm like, there. (laughs) So thank you so much. I know you guys saw the hair as well. (laughs) It's fresh. And my thing about you, your braids always Fresh to death, baby. Thank you. Always fresh to death. I try because I'm like, you know, that's what makes me feel good about myself. So Mm -hmm. when I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh, V, like, you're so cute. So if someone comes to me and tells me that I'm ugly, like, I don't know how to, like, take that in because it really is something going on with you. So I'm like, if people can lie like that and tell me that I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Can you lie like if someone, that? someone can lie like no, that no. and tell me that I'm ugly when I'm I know that I'm there. not. How do you lie like that? If you can bring him up to say that, then everything else you're saying, I can't take it on board. Because so you've lying. just said a big lie. That so now, affirmation I need. You know? So now what? I'm supposed to take it serious when you say that I'm not smart, I'm not good at this. When I, I took the test, I know. Like, mm. let's run and like, you know what I mean? Like, let's, we can do that all day. So like, there's no way, there's no substan- substance to it. So I can't. Now, if someone comes to me and they're like, oh, V, like, you know, when you said that specific word, like right now, there's a more inclusive mm. culture. Like, that's not really what we say now. Oh my God, like, help me, school me. I'm a student of life. Like, I'm on a journey of forever learning. I can have that debate. Yeah. But when it comes to race, looks, anything like that, wh- what are we discussing here? Mm. Because I know I'm cute. I'm going to tell you that for free. So any debate about that, it it doesn't stand. Yeah. That's that, Your Honor. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Like, my case. I got nothing else for So I think, I think for anyone out there who's feeling like, oh my goodness, like I'm really nervous to go in this space, you have to build that armor of love around yourself first. Mm. And like you, to the point that, that sounds absurd for someone to be like, you're ugly. Cause you said it so many times in the mirror. Like, I'm cute. I'm cute. I'm cute. That when you hear that, it doesn't even sit right. You're almost allergic to it. Mm. So I think you got to tell yourself that you're smart. <laughs> you got to tell What's yourself. That smell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to be like, I've got an allergy to that. The same way that, you know, Woke up extra early. Yeah. Hate it today. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have that. You got to, you got to have a shield that like the words come in, it bounces right off. Yeah. So mm. if you're trying to build an idea, you're trying to launch something, keep 
telling yourself, surround yourself with people who tell you. If you're not ready to tell yourself, let someone else tell you, you know? Yeah. Like, and every time you're looking in the mirror about to say something nasty, keep thinking, if my best friend's little sister came up to me with the exact same everything, would I say that? No, you wouldn't. So mm. like, why are you saying it about yourself, you know? So I think I've really committed to this self-love journey. Like, it's not a joke. Mm. Like, I be, I say the nicest things to myself. Honestly, like, if you heard myself talking to myself, you'd be like, what's going on in there? But like, I have to, because this world sometimes is dark and ugly. Okay. Yeah. And I don't need to add to what those magazines and those Photoshop and all these standards are saying. Like, I, it's not my business. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to really be my biggest yeah. cheerleader. And you have to, the work that you do yeah. and how bold you have to be about right. the work oh, that yeah. you do on an international level oh, yeah, requires yeah. you to, you to be to. that confident You have to. And like you have to celebrate yourself and like yeah. all of that stuff. People see it and they might think like, oh my gosh, just for the picture. No, no. I've only just snapped like a, 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 a minor part of that celebration. Like I live it. I'm going to stand mm. on that stage and I'm going to say, I deserve this. Mm. I own this. And don't get me wrong. There are days that are hard sometimes. Like it's not easy. Like I'm not saying you wake up journal one time, you're going to wake up changed. No, yeah. it's a constant practice. The same way that you would practice to be the best piano player. You should practice to be confident. You should practice self-love. And sometimes you hit the wrong keys. The sound will sound a bit dodgy, but eventually you will get there. So I practice it the same way I practice a sport or an instrument. It's it's constant. That's that is fantastic. beautiful. That's fantastic. Thank you. Oh my gosh. And I wanted to touch on something you said, which yeah. was the world's already too dark for oh, you to... <laughs> wicked. You're oh. dealing with a lot of like the dark realities yes. and the, even the work we do deals with a lot yes. of the dark realities yeah. that women face on a daily basis. Oh, yes. And you are doing that in the lane of yeah. girls' education, yeah. but also education for young people yeah. in general. So tell us about EBV, empowered oh. by V, your baby. My baby. Empowered Talk to us about that organization. I love it. Empowered by V is my nonprofit organization that is helping make higher education more accessible to underrepresented groups. And then we also work in that space of girls' education and gender equality. And I love it. I love it so much. It's this beautiful, positive space where mm. we've made learning really, really cool, really, really like it's your right. Like, if that's something you want to access, we're going to try to to help you we go out like looking for funding and resources because we need money okay say the kids again. need the Hello. money mm. right like you can say i believe in you all you like but where's the scholarship right so we're trying to like break down you barriers know what i love about you yeah. yeah she said that at the un right you were like you guys always say young people do this young people do that pay us pay us she give said, us the money to do it. <laughs> money off of me i was si i'm sick of it and it was nerve-wracking don't get me wrong you're mm. at the un and like you're in front of the senior leaders and like mm. i've wanted to be there for so long right mm. but just because i want to be there doesn't mean i'm gonna like miss out the cracks that are mm. in the system like i still think there's a lot of things that the un can improve on and i'm gonna have to say it like someone has to say it so i was like you can't keep on championing youth and saying like the UN is the home of youth, but yet you're running a lot of unpaid internships. Like how many people are you including in that? Like run us the checks. Like we have to, we have to make do as yeah. well. We have to make ends meet. And why is the senior leader at the UN being given a check for like the job that they do when I'm doing the exact same thing? Like mm. age shouldn't be a factor right. in who gets to be paid. So yeah, like that was, yeah, it was hard to say, but like it was important to say. And a lot of young people resonated with that because you now start to think, do I care about this issue mm -hmm. if I'm not willing to do an unpaid internship? Yes, you care, but you also deserve to eat. You know what I mean? Say it again. Like, and women face it all the time. Right? How many organizations say we champion women, we oh. champion equality or gender equality in yeah. the workplace? And it's like, but we're paying you an exposure. Like even in the digital space, oh, we see I it often that. like as creators. We are a that. diverse, you know, we want a diverse campaign, blah, 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 blah. But we only have 90 pounds for you. Money, you got to work. So, me. No, no. It's not good first. enough. It's not good enough. And I was just reading Melinda Gates's um, book, The mm -hmm. Moment mm -hmm. of Lived. Yeah. And she was talking a lot about um, unpaid labor within the house household and like yeah. how much work women are doing in the household but it's never acknowledged like yeah. the gaps are so wide mm. so the work that we do in part by v to be specific like it also ties into all of that like trying to really address some of these inequalities that are putting a, a distance between people mm. because by the time you now get to applying for university that student who has been helping look after their sibling, hasn't had the boiler on at home, hasn't been able to go to those after school clubs, hasn't had all that stuff. The gap is so wide that when they apply, you're now judging them based on that performance in an right. interview or whatever, but like, you don't even know the walk that they've walked. So like, 
yeah all of those things really really bother me a lot and obviously in education as well like girls education you've got child marriage you've got like if you're menstruating a lot of girls have to like miss out on school like yeah. you're missing out on one week yeah. per month every year over a lifetime how much like it would, a quarter of your education that, it's, it's, it's crazy to crazy. me and um it's really sometimes disheartening when you're doing the work and you're having to t- speak to governments who are just not willing to like put funding into education mm. not willing to pay teachers more yeah. not willing to provide in that space because you're like like it's over half your population like you have a duty of care so that's the work that that we're doing it's always advocating championing mm. getting resources and just breaking mm. down barriers because education it can change your life you know yeah, it really, it really but can. how did you get your voice heard like on such a yeah. not just the global stage of like yeah. the un but generally your voice your story yeah. has been making waves since you started at right. oxford yeah. right and which yeah. is where we all met yeah i was not at oxford i was at cambridge a shame <laughs> really a shame <laughs> truly a shame I'm trying to get in the club clearly oxford has the best oh my coming God. out so I was what any misconceptions there as you um, can see, I was with the right team so, as you can see, the the, and yet speaking, there are two that are represented I here I cannot so, believe alas, it we'll let the results <laughs> speak for themselves when we bring <laughs> when we bring a Cambridge grant on I'm going that's to open gonna be so like, funny and that's a way she said, she said where we all <laughs> met that's a but oh anyways um, we all met whilst we were at university yes. and during that time like study tubing and yeah. creating content around yeah. education around mm. our times at university um, was something we were both doing something yeah. we were all doing in terms of being very vocal about our experience and our history mm. before that yeah. point there were so many student talkers, yeah. right? And all of us are doing amazing things since. But how did you get your voice, but also the the causes that you care about yeah. heard? Like, how did you make sure you were heard? You know, like, there was um, a moment at the Empowerment Brunch. We hosted this event and Davina McCall got on stage and she was like, hey guys, so happy to be here. She was like, but you know, the only reason I'm here is because V is like a friendly mosquito. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She called me mosquito. <laughs> I'm not so proud. A friendly mosquito. Uh, yeah, she was like, she doesn't stop. She was mm. like, literally, like, she mm. will just keep going and going and she'll deliver mm. with a smile, but she won't stop, like, until she gets what she wants. And I was like, that's really true because she was like, oh, I've got this. And I was like, okay, so what if we try this? And we try this? Mm. I did not let her give me a no, mm. you know? And I feel like that was a really good description of myself in my life. Like, you'll always hear me somewhere like cheep, 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 like it's a mosquito and I'll bite you I not see you know like I'm always there yeah, but you're and like away. until that goal is achieved I'm not letting it go so I think when it came to this um YouTube space and stuff like that I would be I would just be relentless in saying the same message over and over again it's kind of like marketing 101 really mm-hmm. like you have a brand you have a color you have a logo you keep seeing you keep seeing it eventually you start to accept it mm-hmm. like so I would keep saying it and saying it that the radio stations would like start to hear it. Then I'd go on TV, I'd do newspapers, anywhere where you can let me talk and you will hear me, I'll say it. And because I was sharing my story, a lot of people resonate with it. There's nothing special in the story. That's the thing, like there's nothing special at all, but a lot of people relate. So when you say it, they feel heard and they amplify it. And it's just kind of, I don't know. It's just like, I have the megaphone and then everyone's just like holding me up. Mm -hmm. It's not like a solo thing. It feels Mm -hmm. solo, but it's not at all. Like, um. Yeah, it's a community. Yeah. It's like a story that so many of us share. Like, what? Our parents migrating to another country. Okay, like, how many of us have that? You know, mm. like, sometimes growing up in a single parent household, deputy parent stuff. Like, none of this is brand new at mm. all. I'm just saying it in spaces that it might not have been said before. Yeah. So then it's like, you feel so seen, but then you want to share it. And then the next people want me to go in the space. And I'll just keep on saying the same message. Nothing has changed. Mm. But I, I do think there is an element to it, which it is relatable and yeah. it is special yeah because oh, i think for you thanks. and knowing ha- having had the privilege of hearing about your childhood yeah. and like your life so far as well as your educational journey mm. there is absolutely no denying that like god's favor and god's blessings oh, are shining everywhere so in your nice. life and it's not it's not like exceptionalism or you're yeah. the only person but i do think like girl you deserve your flowers your story is special like right, it's one right. of those stories that go down in history and will right. go down in history 
Um, could so yeah, be. I just wanted you to don't call your story not special. It's oh, relatable and special. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Gosh. No, it's true. <laughs> it's it's true. Good that. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it together right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, thank you. You succeed. I know. Sometimes like I'll listen to this podcast and it literally feels like you're going to church. And there is this one um specific clip that it's on you guys' TikTok, and I think you've pinned it, and you're talking about... He's a, shit, he's a liar. He's a, yeah. he's a liar. He's a cheater. He's a cheater. Oh, my goodness. That liberated the it masses. It hit. Liberated it hit. Because it's the way you say it. It's the way you deliver things. So it's like hearing you say something about me in those in that voice. I'm like... Oh, oh my God. Is that me? Yeah. Hey, hey, even past the Reverend truth, Chief. Um, yeah. Yeah. If Courtney opened the church, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. I'd go every Sunday. Well, and the church said, "Amen." Amen. You said the husband. (laughs) When you said the husband, we could move. Yes, Lord, come to that in a second. Amen. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Girls, girls, when girls chat, girls chat. The other Do you know what? The the thing is, because obviously, like online and stuff, I talk a lot about like um advocacy work. And yeah. there's a very specific like region that I, I speak in and I don't really like steer out of it. Mm-hmm. So when I realized I was covering this podcast, I was really excited. I was like, I hope they ask me something scandalous because it's like, well, I'm on the podcast, I've got to answer yeah, it. You know, so I wouldn't know. really say it on my own space. So like I actually yeah. like, you know, do you hope this. you know you ask me we something cheers. crazy? Cheers. Yeah. We're here to empower, empowered by people. Yeah. But we're also here to gossip. No, I, I feel like I've got permission. Yeah. That is, yeah. That's Both. it. That's Let's it. gossip. That's it. I love it. Um, I think <laughs> we're gonna be talking about you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love <laughs> it. Yeah. I wanna yeah. spill my secrets. Online, all that kind of stuff. So but yeah, what I actually really love what you were saying because it speaks to the power of persistence. And I think a lot of people give up before their time is coming and it makes me think of a quote that is the winners are often the people that are just last standing yeah and wow whilst there is that specialness to your story and Mm -hmm. the specialness to a lot of other people's story that persistence in of itself is very special because it's very hard to come by and i don't blame people for quitting it's hard oh it's tough out here in these streets to be consistent and i think one thing that we love about like this podcast this platform platforms like yours is that persistence we have to be consistent because we have people to show up for so beyond yourself there's obviously your family to show up for and the people that you really care about so i think what is really beautiful about what you were saying was the power in persistence and the, oh, per- the yeah. power of just being the last one standing sometimes yeah. it's not even about being on the offensive exactly. sometimes it's i'm going to be on the defensive yeah. until i am the last person standing 100. and all the beats that i'm getting from one particular person or one particular force yeah. stops yeah until i win That's it's not it's not that. easy at all like sometimes i'll message people and like they don't respond and I'll message again, I'll message again. And I don't mind it. Like I got to the point where like it just feels so normal to me now. And I I, I enjoy it. And um Jack, literally Jack Edwards, I was asking him if he's coming to EBV and he hadn't seen it on his Insta. And it's been two weeks. You better go to his email. So I went to his yeah. LinkedIn, d- I went email. Number, I did WhatsApp. And he literally tagged me on Instagram. He was like, one thing about V, she's gonna find you. I I, I messaged <laughs> him, I WhatsApped him, and like until you tell me directly to my face, like mm. I'm not interested, I'm gonna assume that the door is open. Mm, I'm not gonna, I'm not that. gonna just like, you know, people are busy. Like Courtney, oof, that girl will take so long to reply to you me. You gotta show up at her door. Just show up to her. Courtney. If if Courtney goes back to you, well. if Courtney goes <laughs> back, Courtney Daniela goes back through to our be chat. That's only a privilege because I live with you, so I can show up. Yeah, exactly. The rest of y'all, I don't know. How did you come on our podcast Courtney, and get into it? <laughs> Courtney will take so long, but it's not because she doesn't like me or doesn't love me. Mm-hmm. When she replies, she's like, "Oh my god!" It's and then the message is so beautiful. Like she's replying, yeah, and she's she, going, this is true. so you can't ever like. I can't be like, oh my God, Courtney said no. She didn't actually say no. She just didn't see it because she's been so busy. So if you take that as a metaphor for like life, sometimes it's just that they didn't see or maybe they haven't got around to or maybe they're not in the space to like respond to that. But when they do respond, oh look, it's happening and it's all magical. So I don't ever like take no or take someone taking on to reply. I get it. Life gets busy. So don't take it personal. Keep being persistent. I'm getting better guys. Yeah, she is. No, she. No, made, no, she really genuinely, is. Genuinely, Courtney actually. has. But like when I say absolutely, yeah, wonderful actually, ex, she I is. My yeah, she's um, getting better. I appreciate. <laughs> back to the gist. The gist, 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 gist. You know, <laughs> the mandem. 
So part and parcel of this online work, hyper visibility, being a boss babe, mm, boss chick, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. How is that impacting dating life? The dating oh, you're still young as you well. Know what like, I'm you're saying? in your dating yeah, era. I am. I am. This is so interesting. Honestly, like. This I don't have I ever spoken about my love life online. I really don't know, like properly, like actually being like I think there was like exclusive <laughs> breaking news. Quang, 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 quang. Breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> hello, hello, breaking hello. News. hello. Um, yeah, like, and I get asked about it, like in real life, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know, but like, I haven't spoken about it, but I'm excited to talk about it. You know, um, it's a shambles. Oh, yeah, child. yeah, it's shambolic. Well, mm. it's hard because number one, if someone DMs you. You're mm. already like on the offense because you're thinking mm. offense, defense. I don't know. Yeah. You're already on, you know, edge because you're thinking, what's your intention mm. here? What's wow. going on? Like, why are you messaging? Like, you never, you never really know. And it's happened before. Like, I've dated people who like told me like, oh yeah, like you're really a reprise and like this is great. We're gonna look great together. It's all very much about the optics. And I'm like, huh? Like. Do you even so care I'm about me as a person? Yeah, and yeah, people people say that. Oh, people yeah, literally yeah. say that, and I'm like, right, okay. So that is tricky. Like people being DM'd gives me anxiety. Mm. Like, but I love in person. Like, if I meet someone in person, I don't know why it feels safer in yeah, a way. Yeah. Like, if I'm at like your party, for example, mm. and then I see someone knowing that you know them or I'm at the party yeah. and there's mutuals, something about that feels a lot safer and like yeah. feels less like, it's, I don't know. I don't know. We need to bring back the community CRB chat. Yeah. We need to bring it back. This whole yeah. online thing. That's is what therapy. I need. Like that for me is like my comfortable space. Like what is my status right now? Yeah. Some would call it single. Some. Yeah. I call it waiting to find. Others. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I Fantastic. like that. So if anyone's out there though, and you're like taller than five six, like you gotta be taller than five six. One thing me. you gotta know about V is she's short. Um, um so it's not literally. just a small small, <laughs> it's she's actually a small person. Yeah. I'm five one, that's not tiny now. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. If you, so if you're you taller than five, five three, six. fine, five three and a half. Anything. Don't, don't settle. You said five six. You said five six. Girl. If you're above five six, which many of you are, yeah, there you go. The average for men. There you go. There you go. Exactly. That's so if you're always tall, about she wants six figures, six. She said five six. Yes, that's what I like. I like it, and I just if you just like love cuddling and holding hands. Send the CV, bro. And yeah, and like you've got to like love reading, mm. traveling. Send the CV to two by um, hello at two by sisters. Yeah, com. anything like that. Like I'm down for it. I just want to like oh, find my person you know mm. so yeah currently right now as of today I guess i'm single who knows what could happen tomorrow tonight who knows you go. get Anything. out of my business you know there could be a reputable fellow that is listening to this episode <laughs> yeah. right now thinking V would make sense and you know what you, you should send us if you is honestly message renee please and then Thank send you. it Do to her because or if you've got a brother at home and you're listening you think your brother would suit me yeah, I need to do that for this. Uh oh, oh, Courtney's got a because story. Because some yeah, people yeah. know with the brother thing. Oh. Some people think their brothers are great because they're great brothers, yeah. but they're not great, great partners. partners. Right. But that's sisters, very true. Actually, that's very true. Sometimes leverage. people only show you what they want you to know. Right, 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 right. And they right. only care about you if they, yeah. you know, care about you. And it's got to be you. Got to be a nice person. Like I really need you to care about people. Mm. And like you can't. I mean, I've been watching these, you know, Love Island this year, and there's this guy in Challenge. there i'm not gonna say name you'll know who it is there's a guy in there who's very nice to his partner but not great to other women uh, and i think he said a comment the other day being like but uh, i'm a great boyfriend to you and it's like what uh, is that's not that? All that counts yeah like i want i want to know that you really are a kind person and like if you saw something wrong you would call it out or you'd address it or if i was doing something wrong you'd call it out don't just be nice to me because i'm your partner you know mm. and i want someone to i want to build a life with someone who who's invested in like making the world a better place even if you're not necessarily in that space either you still care yeah you're you're not living in a bubble of like i'm just gonna do whatever and yeah. i don't care about the earth or the world because as long as i'm good and i'm here right now it's like what about the people that come after you yeah. know so yeah i just want a well-rounded gentleman and you'll get it and you'll get it i think there's so much yeah. pressure at times when you are very successful yeah and, uh, to now find that missing piece of the puzzle which <laughs> that's is the partner. thing and you know what's really hard like let's get let's get into it you know what's really tricky is that sometimes some men feel a bit intimidated by like 
the financials of things mm, yeah. like I've, n- I've never been shy about the fact of like things are great like i'm not gonna lie about that like v things is are good. rich she's making money <laughs> now co- now miss money. miss courtney yes. now yeah yes. you gotta do money. that yeah, yeah. but no <laughs> like <GDP>. the <laughs> Or is it US? She, now she gets it all currencies. Yes, all currencies. <laughs> we, take all. All currencies. <laughs> we take it all. We take it all. But no, like I'm, I'm like doing good, and I, I try to always teach my audience and my girls to like not be shy about that. Like yeah. if you're good, like it's okay to be good. I feel like some of us are conditioned to always like downplay things mm-hmm. like that and like talk about money is a bit crude and it's not very ladylike. And it's mm-hmm. like no, like I'm gonna talk about it. Like mm-hmm. I don't care. You know, I love having those honest conversations. But because of that, some guys feel a little bit intimidated they're like well what can i do for you and it's like i think your je ne sais quoi mm-hmm. should be like mm-hmm. in the you love you know it. we could all go we could all go bankrupt at any point like right. of course trying to build generational wealth but yeah. it could happen to anybody and i'd hate to think that my attraction is only based on on what's in the bank yeah you know what i'm 100%. saying it's a bit crazy so yeah if anyone's out there like don't worry about that like obviously mm. let's be able to go to landis you know what i mean <laughs> but like um like a dog caught a chicken yeah lemon, uh, lemon, uh, lemon, 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 that mushroom, mushroom. you gotta get mushroom, it halloumi, but yeah it's hard yeah. it's hard being like oh, visible man. plus then like there's the financial element then there's the education don't get started on that mm. Right, they hear Oxford Harvard, they already think that I can't hold a conversation with you because you're too smart. So like I'm gonna stay away. Soon There's a lot. The thing, the, so, the thing is you'd be so the thing is you'd be surprised. You enter these spaces and mm. the folks that you engage with, not to say y'all ain't smart. Yeah. But the yeah. hype yeah mm. of the that's folks the that thing. go to these institutions that's the thing and this i i get that it affords people a lot of social currency but i genuinely think yeah. that the intelligence that's afforded to a lot of people yeah. that mm. attend these institutions yeah. is so overrated, yeah. overrated. It's unbelievable yeah. because 100%. you will find the smartest people yeah. that didn't go to the yeah. you'll find the smartest people yeah. that did not go to school so because there are so many yeah. different measures of intelligence right like going that's to a thing. russell group or an ivy league yeah. doesn't necessarily make you the smartest it doesn't person, but it also doesn't make you a nice person and either and a lot child. of us are just trying to date nice people. nice people no, nice. and i've been reading michelle obama's books um right now reread becoming yeah. like last mm. week or the week before and now reading the light we carry mm. and she talks a lot about that she's like i've been in the in the rooms that are supposed to be like the, the best rooms in the world and they're the they're, they're, it's just the nothing, you, like go nothing. Home, nothing. Bro. Right. you want to go home bag. early and go like what you said attending those institutions it means it means that you are really good at that subject and topic and you know how to take an exam. Right. Whether that makes you intelligent is a different thing. You might have really good memory. You might just be like having a really good day. You're regurgitating things. Does that mean... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah 100%. I think even with education, like... I've realized that a lot of succeeding in formal education is just hacking. Like it is just 100%. hacking, 100%. gamification, and literally, like you said, systems. You almost have to treat it like a business. Like yeah. what is the formula that will work? Yeah. And that's and this is it. Because we're all tested in just the same way globally, yeah. it doesn't mean that everybody is failing. It's just that this is not your this is not your hacking this space, not, like, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy that in our lives, people often assume, yeah, oh, you want to be with someone who's done that same like academic yes. performance, and it's like, no, nah, I want to be with someone who's intelligent. Yeah, but I'm also smart enough and emotionally intelligent enough to know right. that doesn't just manifest through it does. certificates, right? right? Right. It does, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like a lot of people count themselves out before they've even tried mm. with myself just because of those things. And I'm like, what? Mm. Like, do you really think that a Harvard degree will keep you warm at night? People count themselves out, like in terms of dating me before they've even tried because they assume that they've got to like have the exact same accolades or like, oh, there's this other thing. Like I've got to be making more for me to feel secure. Very weird, very weird behavior. Let's not do that. And I was saying that- <laughs> Sounds like men's business. <laughs> yeah, like that's <laughs> that's very, very <laughs> strange. Like- I gotta sort that out. Yeah, I had someone on a first date was like, I just need to know like, how much do you make or how much is the account right now? So I know if I'm like, okay. I'm like, what? Like, do you like me? And this is what the men need to be discussing in their community. Like, they need to handle that. They said it. They said it. And I was like, oh my God, we have to like stop dating now. Yeah, it doesn't surprise <laughs> me. It was odd. Cease and desist order. Me. Yeah. And the thing is, we really haven't spoken since then because that was so odd to me. Yeah. 
it's not surprising. I think a lot of people see a high flying woman and think she's just high flying mm. in these things, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's all she is. Yeah, and it's the same way people assume that we would then look at men and think, "Oh, you're not high flying. Right. That's all you are." Yeah, but actually, there's so much depth. There's so you. much to it, and I just want to be soft. I just want to be like, <gasps> "Baby, looked after." I want to be passenger princess. I want to like go home and be like, "Babe, you know, like what's that? What's Harvard gonna do with that?" You like, and us all. Baby do you girl. tell me what is a I degree like, gonna do? house then <laughs> <laughs> with heating yeah, yeah, nice yeah. <laughs> but like honestly Nothing just shoot your yeah. shot you never know you okay never know, you never but know. we could know for you so if <laughs> yeah, you yeah, actually yeah. come through us we can let you know how beautiful that story be though and like, could you also submit like a picture to you like let's yeah. formalize this application yeah process because, because she's not just guys like v is a blessing so she is. Oh, she's great people see. and you know she's great people if she's hanging out with us yeah, yeah. Like, we, we don't bring really anybody on this anyway I, public service bro. let me even make sure i'm in focus we don't just bring anybody <laughs> on this podcast it's like true. It's we don't just call anybody friend or sis. Process. It's and true. it's not even like we had to scream V. It was literally just diaries, man. Yeah, we, we were like, yeah, we're yeah, bringing V on the podcast. Room. Do you know what I'm saying? So I it's love not just it. anybody. All the girls that we bring, all the girlies that we yeah. bring on to this podcast. Listen. They are lit. And you know what it is? If you're out there and you're like killing it in your industry and you're high flying women and whatever, don't ever think like you don't deserve to still be pampered and treated well. Absolutely. People sometimes have this thing of like, oh, well, you can get yourself anything. So there's no point in getting you anything. Mm-hmm. What? That's crazy crazy like you deserve to feel your soft self you deserve to like be your true self and like you're allowed to love like you know and you're allowed you're allowed to be loved loved on like somebody buying you something or being able to provide something isn't necessarily just because you need it it's because you can receive love that way and so you deserve to be oh my god this is so powerful you deserve to be loved Yes. And that is the message that we are leaving you with for the end of this oh. podcast episode. Honestly, time has flown. Need you to come back. Time this has flown. So and if you absolutely adored V as much as we did, then please, please, please drop it like it's hot in the comments oh, on YouTube. Would you like so to see Miss V back? We absolutely yeah. would. This is a public And send us a scandalous, like scandalous questions. Oh, you really? <laughs> oh, you want to do she a dilemma episode? Do, do you know oh, what it's giving? It's giving expose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be my outlet, <laughs> girl. We said scandalous questions. You know what? Maybe we should do like guest yes dilemma episode. <gasps> yeah, yeah. I actually because... was thinking about asking you a dilemma would... today, but I think oh, that would be really cool. Yeah. I would love that. Like honestly, like anything that you've ever wanted to know oh. like just ask it just doesn't we'll matter real <laughs> if you want to get the real tea on this view then you if should if you want to get you want specifics you anything should. like that you just ask me all right there you me. go you heard it here first, folks. If you have any further questions, scandalous ones, big scandal, <laughs> please, scandal, breaking please. news, please drop it like it's all in the comments below. Miss <laughs> V, where can we find you on all social media and platforms all and all the work that you're doing? You guys can Google me. Literally, literally. I'm I Googled you the <laughs> other day. Job. I can't remember what for. I think I had to write a bio for myself. Yeah. I was like, let's see what the streets say yeah. about you. Because <laughs> I know it's going to be great. And then I saw, and it's like, you know, when you Google someone, it's like there's Googling someone and then their like name and their yeah, Instagram yeah, comes yeah, up. Yeah. When you Google V, she has pictures. Firstly, <laughs> Google images says this is the person you're trying to find. And there's then a her full government name is there <laughs> <laughs> with a Wikipedia bio. It's true. She is. Hey, it's, with you. Oh my god! I kind of and I don't know when that happened. And they've got oh like a god. Getty images picture as well, which looks oh, so Getty beautiful. Images. She's a celebrity. Oh, oh guys, guys. Celebrity. Let's let's treat her like a commoner. Address her. Dr. V. In the I, I feel, I feel in the like I became really cool when I hung out with Prince Harry. I'll be honest yes, with you. you Before did, that yeah. moment, I was just you know mind my business. Hung out with him, and now I can't go Tesco. Go he hung out with you. This is why, but this that. is why the bad them are intimidating. <laughs> because you, your boys are Prince Lead Harry. Do you know that? what I mean? No, 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 no. Because it's like, oh, who is your boys? Oh, my boy yeah, is yeah, Prince yeah. Harry. I'm like, like you want me to jump to call him? Yeah, what was it? Where do we go from there? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, that's what, so what, do, funny. what do we have to offer me? Like that is hilarious. Well, what yeah, guys, it's true, it's true, it's true. He he's really cool. Um, but you can actually find me VKTV anywhere, like at VKTV on Instagram, VKTV on Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, Threads. Everywhere. Gotta get that in there now. Yeah, threads. Yeah, that, Anything that, that has a social media platform, I'm there. Anywhere I can get my voice heard, I'm Keep there. there. Being like a friendly mosquito. Yeah, thank you, Davina McCall. I really appreciate mosquito that. Mosquito is quite, let's say, butterfly. 
but butterfly is not as nah as mosquito because yeah. 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 I need you to understand like it, it mm. yeah until exactly. you address it it's not going away mm. and that's me mm. and of course you can follow all of her work empowered by V on all social yeah. platforms as well they have a wonderful community there yeah. so if you yeah. are a young lady that is interested in getting into higher education yes. or you are trying to support the wonderful work that they do at that organization then you can also follow over there well, thank you our dear sister we love you and we know you're going off to LA to go and do your doctorate well. and we pray that it is nothing but the best experience mm. ever amen to that and um, probably when you come back on the podcast, you'll be Dr. V. That's crazy. crazy. And we cannot wait to celebrate you. That's, that's be crazy. The best yeah. day. We love you. That is actually That's going to be the yeah. best. And honestly, life. like, I'm so proud of you. No. no, no, no. Y'all don't know. We almost no. made it. Don't do this. Y'all don't know, but I've been. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting Oscar over. I've known V for a very long time now. I don't even know how many years now. Oh, but literally be yeah. before Oxford. I've known yeah. V for a very long time and yeah. I am one of the few folks that can <laughs> that can actually no no because Lara can be like, Yeah, I knew V before. I don't know about you guys. You heard about her, but I knew her. Um and seeing that persistence lived out and yeah. breathed out, that purpose, that mission, that genuine sense of I'm living to make transformation is very yeah. rare to see. And it has been an actual privilege and an honor to see how much you have grown and knowing that this is literally the least that you'll ever be. Oh. So congratulations. <laughs> well done. Thank As your you. like honorary sister, but also your real sister. I'm oh, so proud of you. Gosh, thank and you. We have loved having you on the podcast. We always love having oh. you in our spaces. We love supporting all the work that you do thank and you. just continue to thrive and shine. Thank you. Oh my gosh, we we literally trying our best to not get emotional up that in this place. That was you yeah. Cracked, so. yeah, I'm literally like, <laughs> oh my, my gosh. My <laughs> and I always tell everybody like when we're when we have a group chat called To My Empowered Sisters, do you know that's a sick it name? Is a great that's name. actually Trademark a now. sick Don't try name. Don't try anything. So we have it called I, to, the conference, I know To My Empowered Sisters. So I really, that's really good. love that. And um I was always telling people like it's it's so crazy to me how like the world's merged because like I had Renee and I had Courtney in different ways before like they became Courtney and Renee together and it blows my mind like messaging Courtney about YouTube and she actually replied to me and I was like just fangirling I was like what the heck and she's telling me what cameras she uses and stuff and then Renee like seeing her as a president at Oxford Oxford University and I was like oh my goodness I'd love to be like that one day and then she gave me a tour at Harvard before I even applied and then now seeing it full circle and we're all winning and doing our thing crazy. it's crazy to me crazy. and it's just like this is how it should be you know your peers are literally the people that you can come up with so I think don't ever be like just wanting to talk to Renee only like talk to the people in your classroom mm-hmm. talk to people in your dormitories like that's who you like come together and being able to sit here in this podcast talking Talking about my life and journey and having insane like crazy so sisterhood to my sisters and that's it guys thank you so much please make sure you comment down below if you're watching on youtube if you're listening in your ears right now make sure you run up the likes so we can keep getting downloads um you know it's to my sisters podcast and that we've been the to my sisters and hopefully i'll become a permanent co-host i don't know it's in the air but thank you so much bye <laughs> Yeah. Let's anyway, sisters, our time is so far spent. We know, are wishing I've you a blessed, a wonderful, and excellent week. Mm-hmm. And as always, guys, as always, keep on growing and glowing. It's the wrong way. It's, it's, the wrong way so it's, it's fine. You don't have the work experience yet. We haven't <laughs> onboarded. Uh, <laughs> other way around. Keep on growing hey, and glowing. Glowing and glowing. <laughs> What am I saying? Growing Growing and glowing. glowing. It's glowing and growing. Yes. Glowing and growing. Yeah. Keep on glowing and growing. (laughs) It's a wrap. (laughs) I guess. (laughs) On serious people. It's a wrap, I guess.